Skull. You don't know me? A skull. The name. Welcome back, travelers, to another episode of Viking Loot. We are back here to tell you guys our roadmap for 2019, all the products we plan on releasing, as well as Kickstarters, Mike. Probably 2020 as well. 2020, 2019, 2020, for the next few years. In case you guys didn't know, I am joined here by Andrew Valkowskis, the number one Viking in the world. And I am joined here by my partner in crime, Ken. People that are already on our forums get a really good sneak peek of what's in the works mm -hmm. so if you guys are curious the best place to get on the forums because you will see threads where we've got like alpha tests and yeah. rule sets that yeah. come out Indeed. but in this video we're actually going to go over on everything that's cooking yeah. in pretty much the next 18 months mm -hmm. um maybe a little bit more even starting it off with the number one thing that people have probably already seen in our other loot video which is the viking creatures of fairy tale and miss uh, the first book that should be coming out soon right yeah now. so we've been on track the project's been running really well so we kick-started in august we yeah. finished i think labor day weekend we have been predicting that our first book will come out in Jan late january okay. and then second book late february okay um or early february we'll see how it goes but yeah. so far everything's on other? schedule yeah okay, that's good so so that's going really well and so what's that kind of left us to is what's the next kickstarter right yes. so we've got a couple of candidates and obviously like the fans and the retailers when they get our catalogs mm -hmm. have a big say in terms of what our next kickstarter is but there's something that's been kind of hiding in the wings for a little while here which is one of my favorite little manuscripts that have been sitting on my desk which is the mistletoe spear Ooh, mistletoe spear. That sounds really cool. That sounds very similar to that story of Balder. Is that it? It is. It is. It absolutely I can't is. wait for that. To give you a little teaser, Odin is totally pissed, tosses the spear, and it lands in Midgard. No. After after Balder dies. Oh my spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, that's just the intro. Yeah, this is oh, what? So this is novel two by uh, our beloved author Stephen Pearl, mm. who wrote Horn of the Kraken. Oh, I love that book. So it's a Viking heist, right? Yeah. And yeah. this one's equally like grab onto your seats and you're going for a ride. You are going for a that, wild ride. I'm excited for that book. Stephen writes great novels. Man, you know what? I really wish he had an adventure because Chris Chalice actually made an adventure for his book. So it'd be really cool to see adventure. Yeah, for that. so we have a Scythe and Sword adventure. Yeah. And actually, Stephen has been working what? on his Horn of the Kraken adventure. It's like this is like, you know, like, man, it's like we thought about this before I said it or something. It's kind of cool, right? Right. But it is still in the work. So okay. what we want to do is like our philosophy here is a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. We kind of got the old school Blizzard mentality. If you guys know the, the, the video game studio from days gone by. I don't think it's their mentality nowadays. But... It's, it's ready when it's ready. We want to make sure that what we put out, we are super proud of, super happy. So we never rush anything out. Like we'd rather over deliver and take a little bit longer. Yeah. And so this this adventure, we want to get it just right for you guys. And we've got a little, little tweaks that we need to put in there. Mm. But it, it's coming. It's coming. I'm excited. So this, this Kickstarter, um, the manuscript's done. Yeah. So the only thing we're going to be looking for are like editing budget and... Yeah cover art budget so it won't be the biggest kickstart but it'll still be at least another kickstarter right? it'll be a small amount but i think a lot of people are going to jump in yeah. just simply because horn of the kraken was a huge it hit it was a really good book and i mean everyone's looking forward to the sequel mm -hmm. you know all of those beloved characters from the first book They're actually make back. a return oh, yes so that that i'm super excited about then we've got another interesting one which i've been working on personally for what is it, like two years? It's the War of Shadow. Oh, is that an expansion that we've been working for? It's, it's working, actually, looking it's been, it's morphed. It's no morphed. longer just an expansion. It is actually going to be a standalone game as well. What? Yeah. I'm excited about that. So. I was a big fan of the Denizen as well. And then you had the um, Lord of the Ashes, which is really great. The Gods. I'm a huge fan of the Gods as well. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what we get with the brand new book that's going to be coming out. Especially with a standalone game. That's very unique to this concept. Okay. Here's the kicker. It's not a book. It's not a book. This has really taken on a life of its own. When I started this two years ago, I was like, it's going to be another book, like Lords of the Ash, it's going to be like Denizens of the North, and it's going to cover the third age of Ragnarok. Okay. As this went on, a couple of things changed. First of all, I think it's going to be hitting for mature audiences because there's a lot of dark stuff that's happening okay. in, this, in this game. This is uh, not family friendly, just letting you know. Well, older family friendly. Older family friendly, yes, sir. Second thing is... It's not going to be in a book format because I tried something a little bit unconventional. Yeah. 
and I didn't think it would stick, but it has actually resonated with our fan base at various conventions that I've run it at. And the game is going to be based on a deck of cards. What? You're going to be making your character using cards. I'm excited about that. And your adventure is going to unfold using cards. Oh, that's crazy. I have so many questions about this, but that's definitely going to be for another video. For sure, for sure. Like, definitely one of those product previews that we're going to do. So, don't want to spoil it too much, but that is something that is going to be so, so insane, so unique. I'm actually so excited about that. So, the next one, The Children of Ariu. Ooh, what's that? So, just like we've got Lords of the Ash and Denizens yeah. of the North, this is another big book, big book expansion Jeez. for the Ragnarok system. And this is based on Celtic mythology. Oh, that's Celtic crazy. gods, Celtic archetypes, Celtic monsters, that's Celtic culture. I like that because I don't, ha I don't have much knowledge about Celtic, but I know that it was a huge influence in the Viking mythology. So the fact that we get to learn about that is going to be actually really amazing. I'm actually super excited about that. So much stuff right now that I'm excited about that I just... I don't know, man. There's <laughs> too much stuff coming out in 2019, 2020. Just, oh, it's too but much. here's the happy part for me. I, I love Norse mythology. It's like my favorite mythology. The second is Mesoamerican. Yeah. And the third is Celtic. And I know a lot about Celtic mythology. But I'm actually partnering up with two authors and designers that know way more than I do. Tell me more. So I'm partnering with two genius guys that know the stuff way better than I do. Yeah. Tyler and Mathieu. And these two guys, every time I'm in a conference call with them, when we're discussing in terms of what's coming out, I'm actually like Googling stuff. And I'm, I'm going through books. I think I bought four new books from my extensive mythology bookshelf mm -hmm. on Celtic myth mm -hmm. just by talking to these guys. Well, you guys are seriously in for a treat. These guys are going to the, like, the nines on this. That's going to be sick. Tell me a little more about those guys. Like, obviously, we're going to get more, like, more information about them in yep. future videos. But like, just a little backstory. Like, who are these people? So Tyler I found because he had written uh, source material on Celtic culture for other game systems. Okay, that's cool. So that's how I, I crossed paths with him. And okay. we chatted. And, and he was very excited to work in the Ragnarok yeah. and, and Fate of the Nord space. And Mathieu was actually a beta tester that came to our weekly games to test Lords of the Ash, uh, like our final stretch of Lords of the oh. Ash. And we started chatting, and I'm like, wow, this guy really knows his stuff. And, I mean, we were talking a lot about mythology back and forth, and he has a, a good handle on the mechanics. So he's kind of like the mechanics guy and the lore guy, and Tyler's like, you know, the stories and the culture guy. So I, I think just like a beautiful mesh between yeah. these guys and uh, just kind of the vision of what I want to see in this lore book that expands the fate of the Norns universe with a whole new like mythology, a whole new culture, yeah. like a plethora of choices for denizens, or for players and Norns. I find it amazing that you found like a, a fan, a player, and then he was able to work work for you for a content that he enjoys. I find that amazing that you have someone like that, and you also have. The other, you have the other spectrum. You have someone who's actually worked in the industry. So it just shows that you can just be anybody and still be able to write great content. So I'm actually super excited to see how that clashes together and how it miss, miss and matches. Miss, mismatch? Miss and matches, I guess that's how we say it. How it comes together? Yeah, how it comes together. That's the proper term. I'm not really good with these expressions, you know. It's like killing one bird with two stones. Yes. <laughs> Overkill. Overkill. It's the Viking proverb. <laughs> Why kill a bird with one stone when you can kill it with two? Exactly. Make sure it's... All right. So what do we got next? The next one is really dear to my heart, and that one is called Chronicle of Kings. Mm. This is our very first Fate of the Norns board game. Board game? Board game. What? So I've had a lot of thoughts about creating a board game for a while. But you know what the muse was? This map. This map that we've been seeing for a couple of videos right now, mm -hmm. and we keep this down here as kind of an inspiration, it's a muse. Um, this was created by Bohemian Weasel, who did the second chapter of Denizens of the North. She's super talented, and when she created this map in a very large scale, and we had to shrink this down to an 8.5 by 11 page, the first thing I felt was pain in my heart. I said, this is just it's not gorgeous. right for such an amazing piece mm -hmm. of artwork to be shrunk down to something so yeah. small. And so for a really long time, I was thinking, what can I do with this map? And this map became my inspiration for Chronicle of Kings. That's such a beautiful map. If only you guys can see. We'll show you guys a small clip of this. Like, look how great this look. Like, you guys can see it close up. You can also even preview the little figurines that are going to come out. Like, guys, take a look at this. Hand-carved. This is really, really nice. I actually saw the picture of this in the book, and it looks 
actually amazing. I'm actually excited to try this out whenever it comes out. I actually haven't tried it out, but it seems like a great We game. have to get you to the table for this. We definitely have to get this. So game. this is version two of the map. The yeah. first map was um, three times the size. Yeah. So this is one third of the map. Yeah. And we've been test playing this for a good two years. Um, so we've, we've taken a lot of elements of designs that I already enjoy. Things like the narrative from Arkham mm -hmm. Horror, the tension from things like Small World, yeah. the ease of play from Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of board games that inspire the overall arching design of this. So there was one game that was kind of a heartbreaker for me, yeah. which was on the computer called Crusader Kings, mm. which you play a lineage of nobles, okay. uh, kings and queens over centuries. And the game is super hard to play because you spend more time on YouTube trying to figure out how to play the game yeah. than actually playing the yeah, game. I and my wife and I, we adore that game and we want to play it. And I said, you know what? Why not make the board game version of this? About two and a half years ago, um, I posted on our, on our forums, you know, this is a mission that we're trying to achieve. We're going to try to use the, the components that we already have in the Fate of Norns universe. And over the last two and a half years, we've been refining and refining different aspects of the game in terms of, you know, how do we deal with generational successions? How do we deal with quick actions? But then how do we deal with very colorful and flavorful mm -hmm. scenes that bring the narrative out in the game? And the way you win the game is actually by having the most renown. So you have to be the family with the most drama so let's it's say, not like kill game. everybody and win the no. game it's not like conquer the world and win the game although it does help it's it not does. the way so that's actually really cool we don't want to spoil too yeah. much of the game definitely definitely gonna be another video for that but that is, seems like a crazy good i just love i just love this map so ken one of the things that really excites me about this project and pretty much all of our projects is the aesthetic that we go for mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so the map was done by bohemian weasel which mm -hmm. is like an amazing talent yeah but I found a woodcarver in Belarus named Bagushevich yeah. who hand carves these statues that are highly, highly stylized of Viking gods and heroes. And that's kind of the aesthetic we're going to be looking for to represent your nobles upon the map. So is it going to be six players for now or is it going to be more? We don't really know. We don't know. We're in the fine tuning phase. Okay. So we've gotten out of the, the whole um, alpha feature complete stage this fall. We went to Metatopia for the second yeah. time with the same board game. I had peer reviews from my fellow game designers and basically validated the decisions we took in the last 12 months. Okay. So we're kind of, we're ready. We've sent a couple of these maps out to just our most loyal fans that really want to try this at their board game table every week and give us feedback. And we're going to be expanding this beta as we approach the Kickstarter. So now let's get to the before last one on our okay. roadmap. And that is Ragnar Shots. Ragnar Shots. Sounds like a drinking game. Yeah, well, one guess. What kind of game do you think this well, is? I think it's a drinking game. It just kind of sounds like a... We need a party game. This is something that I've wanted to get into our, our, our whole line of Fate of the Norns games for a little while. And I, I, I met some really interesting characters in, uh, I think it was Calgary Expo. They have a game called Surplus of Popes. And I just love their humor. I love the art style. So they're they're going to be the, the team behind putting together Ragnar Shots, That's which gonna is going to be our very first party game. I'm excited. For the, the Fate name, of the Norns line. The name is top 10. And you can imagine, it's going to have some drinking. It's gold. Wait, aren't we just drinking Coke? Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. I always have to have a drink. It's kind of going to segue into our last game. Mm -hmm. So this isn't for Ragnar shots, if, in case you're wondering. This is actually for Vigrid. Sorry to deceive you. There's not a bottle of uh, there's not a bottle of alcohol in here. There's actually hexagonal cards. Uh -huh. And this is Fate of the Norns CCG. Yeah, collectible card game for those who aren't good with acronyms. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I've been a fan of Magic: The Gathering and uh, you know, me too. Vampire. Any card game. Any card game, Doom Trooper. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can go through the list. I mean, I play Pokemon CCG now with my with yeah. my kids. I've always wanted to do a CCG for the Fate of the Norns universe. And just like everything that we do, we don't want to do a d existing design with a tweak. Yeah. We want to take this like from the ground up, yeah. something completely new and revolutionary. And as you can take a look at, these cards are hexagonal. Yes. Um, their positioning matters in relation to one another and their orientation. And you're gonna have champions, you're going to have overlays on certain cards. We've been at this for, I would say, three years. I'm actually, yeah, it seems about right. Three years, right? Eh? Yeah, it's about maybe a little over two, two to three years now. 
I'm actually excited about that. The cool thing is it's very similar to Hero Clicks when it comes to clicks, but it's a hexagon no matter what. You always get hexagon worth of stats, essentially. So. And I can tell you, this is my most challenging design yeah. of them all. Even though I've played so many CCGs, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to do something that's very unique yeah. and kind of brings the flavor of the world to the card game and has the card game focus on simplicity but depth of strategy mm -hmm. rather than the complexity of rules. Like I said, it's going to be ready when it's ready. When it's ready. Could um, be a well. while. This probably will be the last product to be launched, depending on what we plan on doing with it, which we don't want to spoil too much, but that should be very, very exciting news for you guys coming up in the next few years or so. For a possible digital collab mm -hmm. that we're looking at for this game. So Let's see how that goes. This may not just be a print but yeah. and a digital product as well. So that will be it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our roadmap video and hopefully you guys are excited for all the product. Let us know in the comments down below which one of these products are you the most excited about. Definitely. I am definitely excited about this board game as well as the Creatures of Fairy Tale and Myth story lore book. I'm actually excited about that. I love those type of books. Super excited about that. Definitely, definitely subscribe to keep updated on all the new stuff that we'll be getting and new videos that we'll be uploading every single week, if not four times a week, especially with the other cool stuff that we are coming out. And make sure to hit that like button because we would appreciate it. Though, although it doesn't really do anything, it, it just affects our ego. And don't forget, our Patreon backers get early access to mm -hmm. all of the stuff. And if you guys have any kind of ideas that you'd like to see for a roadmap, uh, Patreon backers actually get an extra channel on Discord, a special uh, tier where you can actually chat with the creators of many of these projects and help us influence the final product. Skull. Skull. Safe travels. Oh,